Hey folks, uh, today we're going to talk about parking tickets. It may surprise most people to find out that most parking tickets that are issued aren't issued by a cop at all. Now, in this video, we're going to go over the ways in which parking tickets are used by municipalities, why they're issued, who issues them, and exactly where the money goes and how all of that works, at least where I'm at. Uh, please, this is a live stream on YouTube, so leave me some pertinent comments down in the comment section so we have something to talk about when it's all over. Uh, before we get started on talking about parking tickets, I want to let everybody know the podcast, uh, freefieldtrainingpodcast.com, that's freefieldtrainingpodcast.com, is up right now, and there is exclusive content on there that is not available on YouTube. It was from an Instagram live stream a couple of weeks ago called Thieves in Law Enforcement. Please go check it out. I think you guys are going to like it. Let's go break their servers. I also want to, before I get into the parking ticket stuff, thank uh, Bill from Jiva Coffee. This stuff isn't for sale. I'm not selling it. There isn't a link for it anywhere. He sent it to me because he thought it would be cool for me to have it. So he sent like four pounds of coffee, which is really nice of him. And he put my logo on it, which is really nice of him. It's delicious stuff. And also, the patches are shipping. So anybody that ordered a patch... You are getting emails from me with a picture of the envelope that the patch is coming in so you know what to look for. They are all shipping out. There's going to be links at freefieldtraining.com slash merch. There's going to be a link down in the description in case anybody wants a patch. They're pretty cool. All right. So I'm going to start with a little story for you I think everybody's going to find interesting. About a year ago, I got a parking ticket. And I didn't get it on my car. I got it in the mail. I got a letter that said, hey, Tommy. You got a parking ticket. It was for some town up on the north side. I look at it and I look at the dates and I said, this, I've never been to that town before, ever. Why am I getting a parking ticket from here? And I look at it. It's got my license plate number on it, which is all, my plate is all numbers. And then it says it's, a, it's for a two-door Acura that's black and it's for not having a city sticker. Now, there's several things wrong with this. And those of you who are police officers like me are going to know exactly what's wrong with this. One, I don't own a two-door black Acura. I don't own an Acura. I don't own a black car or a two-door. So it's none of those things. And I've never been to that town, but also I don't live in that town, so how would they be issuing me a ticket for not having a city sticker for the town? That's what it said on there. No city sticker for the sound of whatever. So I call up. And to the adjudication officer, that's what we have here in Illinois, is you call the municipality, they send you the adjudication officer, you talk with them, and you say, hey, listen, this wasn't me. <laughs> this is my license plate number, but I don't own this car. If you check on the Secretary of State's database, that's not the car that comes up. And this, this wasn't me. Somebody fat-fingered some numbers into a keypad or something, or wrote the wrong thing on a ticket. So they had me fax over my registration to them. Because it's at the city hall, not at the police department. So they don't have the same access to the information, Secretary of State and BMV registration information that everybody else does all the time. And they looked at it and they said, oh, well, yeah, clearly this isn't you and you wouldn't need a city sticker anyway. And I said, yeah, clearly. And so they said, don't worry about it. We're going to get rid of it, which was awesome, right? That's what you kind of expect from your local government when you call them and you act like a person and you explain things in a reasonable manner to them. So a couple months ago, I get another one in the mail. This one's for a different car, same license plate. I was like, this is weird. This is really, really weird. So I call up there. I said, look, I know that no one actually issued me this ticket because I was training a guy at the time that this ticket was supposedly issued. And when I train people, if I am checking anything on the MDT to show them something, you know, show them how you can sound X a name, show them how you can look somebody up, how to run a CQ, all the stuff that you're supposed to put in. I do it on myself. I use my license plate number, my name, all of that. So nobody can say he's looking up, you know, such and such or such and such. I want it like, there's no unauthorized access. I'm looking up me. And if anybody has the ability to have access to the information for me, it's me. Some guys use like ABC123 as the, the test license plate number. I just use my own. I figure if anybody asks, they'd be like, oh, clearly he was using his own. Makes sense. I said, I've, I was running my plate on at least a weekly basis. We can see in the last 10 days who ran the plate and no one's run it, but me. And I ran it as soon as three days before. No one's run that plate, especially not you. Cause that would stick out because you're some North side agency. I've barely heard of before. The lady tells me, well, uh, I, I think they found it in house 
that that license plate number came back to you. And that's why it got issued there. I says, what is going on? I said, oh, well, I'm looking at our old records and on the computer, and I can see what happened. She says, well, this is an issue. We, we have meter mates here. It wasn't a cop, and that's why your plate was never run. And, you know, it, that employee that we were having problems with had done that a whole bunch. Uh, they're not with us anymore. Great. So what you're saying is they had a little box, the little electronic gizmo e-site thing that we don't have where I'm at because we don't have enough parking tickets to need it. And they were just, you had a meter maid just punching random numbers in there issuing people tickets. And they had no, they were issuing people city sticker tickets not knowing where the car comes back to. In case you don't have city sticker tickets where you're at, City stickers are a little sticker. It's like your registration that you buy for the city for the car you put up on your windshield or on the back bumper. You're not required to have one if you don't live in the town. And I don't live in that town. So how would they write me a ticket for it in the first place? And why is the meter maid going around writing people's city sticker tickets when they have no ability to see if that car's registered to the town? Shouldn't be done at all. So, this leads me to the problem with parking tickets, and the problem people bring up with parking tickets, and something that I think is a very valid point with parking tickets. When all of the police detractors come out and start complaining about parking tickets, I think the one thing that they don't understand is that most of the complaining they're doing is not about cops. They're complaining about local municipalities, and they're complaining about meter maids, and the entire process of having meter maids. So, let me explain how this works. Municipalities, they sell people these city sticker tickets, or they make meters that go on the side of the street. It's all about making a little bit of money for the town. The city stickers are normally not expensive unless you don't buy them, or unless you get a ticket for them. So like around here, most towns, the city stickers are 15 bucks. You pay $15, you don't have to deal with it for the rest of the year. So most people just pay it. The people that don't pay it and park their car on the street get caught and end up paying a $50 ticket. It's the city's way of making sure everybody buys their city, sticker tick, their city sticker, so that way they can make their money. And that money goes in the general fund that pays for a whole bunch of things for the town. It's just another layer of tax. And although I'm not a big advocate for another layer of tax, it's just another layer of tax. What you get is, towns will tell the cops, we want you to go write all these tickets, and if the cops are not open for writing all of those tickets or they're not open to the methods in which the city wants them to go to to write the tickets. I've heard of towns telling their guys, go up onto people's private property, even if they have a car in their backyard with a sheet over, you know, like a cover over it, pull it up, make sure it's got a city sticker. If it doesn't have a city sticker, write the ticket. I've heard of towns telling their cops, well, we're not going to make payroll next month if you guys don't bring in a bunch of revenue by writing tickets. And the thing in Illinois is that, like, speeding tickets... All, all moving violations, the state gets the vast majority of that money. The city gets almost nothing. So it doesn't really pay the municipality to tell you go out and write speeding tickets or go out and write suspendeds or go out and write stop sign violations. That stuff is done for the right reasons. The reason we should be writing tickets is to change behavior. Preferably dangerous behavior. But it's to change behavior. So if someone's parked in a fire lane, write them a parking ticket. Somebody's parking a handicap, we write them a parking ticket. Somebody's parked block in the street, we write them a parking ticket. We shouldn't be coming up on a people's property and looking in their garage to see if they have a city sticker, and then if they don't have a city sticker, writing them a ticket. That's silly. So what municipalities do when they get pushback from uh, police officers, and normally pushback from police administrators, who stand up and say, this, this isn't the thing that we should do, or we don't have the manpower to do this, what they'll do is they'll hire meter maids. They'll create meter maids and they'll have them go out, or whatever they call them. Some places they, they call them code enforcement, community service officers, whatever. But the idea is the same. We're going to get someone, and we're going to train them to do just what we want them to do, and we're going to send them out there to do it. And all too often, when you get meter maids who have been minimally trained by a city, and a city administrator, or a city manager, or someone else that's in the chain of command decides that they're going to tell these people, any car that doesn't have a little sticker in the windshield that looks like this, go write them a ticket. And so because they don't know better, they go and do it. And this is where the vast, overwhelming majority of parking tickets, at least where I'm at, in the Chicagoland area, the vast, overwhelming majority of parking tickets, that's where they come from. So 
So one of the times that we should be using parking tickets. This is a training channel. It's free field training. If you're in a position where you have the ability to write parking tickets, hopefully someone's had this discussion with you before. But if they haven't, what are the situations where we should be writing parking tickets? Well, one, if there's a complaint and it's valid. Very often we get people that are handicapped and they have a handicap sign out in front of their house. They petition the city, I want a handicap sign in front of my house. I don't have a driveway. I don't have a garage. I need a place to park. It's got to be near my house because if it's not near my house, I got to I got to hobble, you know, a hundred yards to my house because we don't have a lot of parking on the street. Somebody calls and says, "Hey, somebody's car is parked in the handicap spot in front of my house." We get there. There's a car parked in the handicap spot in front of the house, and it doesn't have a placard. And it doesn't have a plate. It doesn't belong. It's clearly marked. You write him a ticket because it's to change negative behavior. I said in my duty bag video, if you get a ticket from me, I'm not a big ticket writer, but if you get a ticket from me, it's probably going to be a parking ticket. It's probably going to be for handicap parking because at one time I was wheelchair bound when I was younger and then I had a walker and I had casts on my feet. I was called bilateral talpedes, what most people call club foot. And so I had limited mobility. So I understand where people are coming from when they're handicapped and they can't get around. That's one of the few things that I'll actually go out and self-initiated right. See somebody park in a handicap spot and then run into the business, they're going to come back out and there's probably going to be a ticket on their car if I have the time to do it. The other thing we get is people parking in the lane of traffic, which has become more of an issue now since the big push, don't text and drive, don't talk on your phone and drive. Now people pull over in the middle of the street, streets that go two lanes either way with the center turn lane, they'll stop in the middle of the street to text on their phone. And you pull up behind them, get out, and you're like, are you broke down? No, no, I'm, I'm texting. No! <laughs> get driving! And if they go, oh, as soon as I'm done, you just wait right here. I got, I got something for you. It'll be a reminder not to stop in the middle of the street, right? And in that same vein, it solves problems. Again, we write tickets to change behavior, especially dangerous behavior. So one way that I like to use parking tickets is to solve problems. Uh, I just had one a few days ago. Road rage incident. Two people stopped in traffic because one person almost hit the other person. Not they had an accident. Not they crashed into each other. They almost hit the other person. So now they're out of their cars screaming at each other. Luckily, I got there in time before it went to blows, but they're out screaming at each other. And now neither of them want to leave. They want to, they want to, you know, make their point. So I get out and make my point. Hey, you two are parked in the lane of traffic. Either get in your cars and leave, or... You're both going to get parking tickets for parking in the middle of the street. And if you don't move them now, I'm going to write you parking tickets and I'm going to tow your car. As soon as you start talking about towing cars and writing tickets, people solve their own problems really fast. Problems that they couldn't solve before, issues that they had that were the end of the world, suddenly don't seem like a lot when you start talking about writing parking tickets and towing their cars. And that's the proper use of applying the tool of parking tickets to police work. Somebody's parked in a fire lane... At the old folks' home, you should probably write them a parking ticket. So that way they learn not to do that again. And if you come back two hours later and it's still there with a the ticket on it, tow it. Because if there's a fire in that building, the fire department can't get in. If somebody has a medical emergency in that building, the ambulance can't get in to get those people out. People having road rage in the middle of the street and don't want to learn to get on with their life, and you get there and they still don't want to get on with their life, start, start handing out tickets. Problem solved. Yeah, I, I could deal with the road rage to lock you both up for disorderly conduct, but will that teach you your lesson more? Or will writing you tickets and towing your car teach you your lesson more? You don't get out of parking tickets and towing cars. And the video, the dash on the camera on the... Bleh, and the video from the dash cam on my squad is going to tell the story when you try to go to the adjudicator and say that I was picking on you. They're going to see the totality of that incident, and you're probably not going to get the minimum fine, you're going to get the maximum fine. All right, so that's kind of my rant on parking tickets. I understand where people get upset that it's used by some municipalities and, and probably some states, but some municipalities as a revenue stream. And I don't think that's right, right? I think that they should be for the proper reasons. And just like all of our tools, if they're misapplied, there can be disastrous consequences. If we just run around going in people's backyards, writing them tickets for things that aren't actually offenses, because we know they can't prove otherwise later, it's eroding, it's eroding our relationship with the community. And when we erode our relationship with the community, that's how we get ourselves into sticky situations later on down the road. And it's not good for any of us. 
All right. All right, so thank you all for listening to my rant about parking tickets. I get a bunch of comments every once in a while, normally from people that are upset that they got a parking ticket asking about them, so I figured it was something we could bring up now. Now I'm going to take some comments and questions from the YouTube live stream. So hold on for me for a second. We're going to scroll up. And let's see... Who has, let's see who has some comments and questions that are pertinent to the discussion at hand. H2 Gaming 101 says, coffee! It's delicious. I love me some coffee. I'm going to be honest with you. I love it all kinds. Even at a gas station at 2 a.m., I just love it. I might have a slight caffeine problem. Jace M says, I think there should be a law if the officer issues you a speeding ticket or any type of ticket, the option should be allowed to take payment for the ticket. You mean take payment immediately right there? I could see how that would cause a lot of corruption problems. I, I could see that being an issue. And honestly, even if it didn't cause corruption problems, it would give the implication that there's corruption problems. That guys are just saying, hey, I'm going to issue you a ticket and then taking the money. Joseph Leone says, thanks for all the helpful info currently in the hiring process for the South Carolina Highway Patrol. Good luck on your journey, man. Highway Patrol often has very difficult academies. I, I wish you luck. Robert Griffith says, what's your opinion on the Florida... There. Robert Griffith says, what's your opinion on the Florida deputies in Parkland? Uh, that's going to be up on the podcast pretty shortly. Go check out that podcast, freefieldtrainingpodcast.com. That's freefieldtrainingpodcast.com. There's a link in the description. And that's on an upcoming live stream for the Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram already, go over and follow me on Instagram. If you don't want to miss these streams, make sure you click that little subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you get notifications when these live streams start. Sam Martinez says, free field training condoms, do it. We're not, we're not doing branded condoms. <laughs> I don't need them. I'm snipped anyway. <laughs> I'm not having any more kids. Bob Bob says, this channel along with Officer 401 are the best cop channels on YouTube. I really like Officer 401. Uh, when he started, I was bigger than him. And we made a little agreement to like shout each other out. I was like, hey, man. I'll talk about you, you talk about me. It can only make each of us bigger, right? And I got a whole bunch of subscribers from him after he blew up. He's over 400,000 subscribers now. He's really entertaining. If you don't follow him now, which I'm sure you do if you're watching my channel, you should go check him out. He does a lot of good stuff. Scout3058 says, Parking duty is the worst. I avoided it at all costs. See, I'm not into doing traffic enforcement. I don't, I don't like doing traffic division. I don't like running around writing people tickets. I'd really go answer calls. And so that's what I do. <laughs> and they need me answering calls and training people. So nobody's threatening to put me in parking enforcement. <laughs> Kyle says, my city has street sweeping, so they give parking tickets out like candy. We have street sweeping too, but we put these little temporary signs up telling people that... The street sweeper's going to come down the street, and if you don't move your car, you're going to get a ticket. Your car's going to get towed. Most people move them. And that's an issue that traffic enforcement deals with, so I don't have to, which is very nice. Johnny Reb says, my favorite parking tickets to write are for Expletive Deleted, who park in the handicapped spot without a placard or tag. I would tend to agree. See, the only downside for that with me is that when I find just the car and it doesn't have a placard or tag, at least one time out of 10, I'll write it, and then the person who owns that car will be at the police station three hours later talking to my boss. My boss will call me in there to mediate whether or not they should have been written a parking ticket or not because they're like some little old lady. But if I see somebody pull into the parking spot and then run into the store, no, no, I'll write that. That doesn't bother me at all. I don't feel sorry for somebody that's doing that. G. Wagner says, thanks for joining my live stream. I joined G. Wagner's live stream earlier today on Instagram. He seemed to really like it. He does 
uh, weather forecasts around the country. So you get you go onto his live stream on Instagram and tell him where you're at, and he gives you a customized weather forecast. I guess he's in good with Noah or something. It's interesting. Every once in a while, I catch his live stream. We talked for a little while about tourniquets. Camo Miller says, "I'm in the process for of the." Camo Miller says, I'm in the process of becoming a deputy. My biggest worry about being a Leo is the stress that it puts on relationships. I have heard the divorce rate for cops is through the roof. Any truth to this? Yeah, there actually is. That's that's a rough thing. That's why I stress on the channel is you have to stay centered. Like You have to have people in your life that are not in police work. You have to have people in your life that are not into the same things that you are into, especially not into the same work-related things that you're into. And you have to keep a balance between family and work. It can't just all be work. Tear Talks says, very informational channel. Maybe one day my channel will catch up to yours. I'm sure if you keep cutting out the kind of content that you're putting out now, it will eventually. I I was super excited when I had 600 subscribers. In case you guys don't follow Tear Talk, Tear Talk is a YouTube channel. As far as I know, Tear Talk is just a YouTube channel as of right now. Then he does corrections stuff. So he talks about modern day issues and concerns for correctional officers. You should go check him out if you're interested in becoming a correctional officer. DCB Cuban says, how many miles should you be able to run when first entering the police academy? However far they say you should be able to run, double it. That's my suggestion. Double it. Make it easy when you go to the police academy. Ethan Rifkind says, that's insane. I wonder how many other people didn't know any better and paid it anyways. Well, that's what some places are are banking on, is that you're going to get a parking ticket and you're going to look at it and be like, do I want to spend three hours of my life arguing about this or is it easier just to pay the 50 bucks? I get the impression that that's why a lot of college towns, the parking tickets are 15 and $25 so that it's low enough that people will just pay it, that students will just pay it so they don't have to deal with the administrative hassle of it. But I'm a cop. I know the administrative process, and I just go through it. Problem solved. Jessica Wilkinson says, when there are late tickets that people don't pay, does it go on their driving record or not? It depends on the state. For instance, I know in Michigan, Michigan is very serious about parking tickets. Michigan will create a Michigan driver's license for you. Last time I heard, if you are a resident from out of state that's that's in the compact or not in the compact, we can talk about that maybe later, because the compact states will only suspend for things, certain things, Michigan, if you're from out of state and you go into Michigan, you get a parking ticket, you don't pay it and it goes overdue. Michigan will create a driver's license for you and suspend it. And no one would ever know. So you could go to Michigan get a parking ticket, laugh and not pay because you're from Chicago where parking tickets are a civil matter. And you go back to Michigan in 20 years having no idea that Michigan created a Michigan driver's license for you and suspended it. And if you get pulled over in Illinois, we would never even know that there's a Michigan license for you. As long as when they ran your license, it came back in Illinois, we don't run it all 50 states. So we would never know your Michigan license was suspended. And if you don't keep up on your driver's license information... So let's say you move in between the time you get issued the ticket and the time that they suspend your license, you may never get notification. I've had that happen to a few friends of mine. I used to work at a scout camp called the Waspy Scout Reservation up in Michigan. And a couple of friends of mine got parking tickets and ended up getting their licenses suspended and their cars towed and stuff. But in Illinois, it's a civil issue. What they do is they raise it to the maximum amount. It's like $500 or something first offense when it goes overdue past 90 days. And then they send it to collection. So it becomes a civil matter. Johnny Reb says, Tommy, I got issued a brand new 2017 unmarked charger to replace my wreck Caprice. Well, hopefully you're on midnight. You're going to catch some burglars with that thing. You know what you do is you get the little, the little lights that you can put up on the dashboard, like the suction cup lights, the little accent lights that people put on Honda Civics and stuff to make their car look cool. You get them for like $15 at AutoZone and you stick them to the windshield of the unmarked car and then it looks like some ricer. 
and people will do crazy things around you. Dudes will look and just look away as soon as they see like little accent lights on the car. It's worked. It's worked really well for me in the past. When I first got the Chevy Impalas at work, people didn't realize Chevy Impalas, even fully marked Chevy Impala was a police car. So I put little lights up on the dashboard, little red, just glowing lights. And people had no idea was that was a squad car. Got a lot of good cases that way. Crip Cypher says, are the tickets issued by Mirror Maids lawful at all? Any reason to pay them or will it go against your driving record? Well, it doesn't matter who issues the ticket. If the municipality gives them the authority to issue the ticket, it in Illinois, it's a civil matter. Now, every state is different. So you got to check your local laws on that. In Illinois, it's a civil matter and they'll just send you to collections. So if you've got any credit at all, you should probably pay your parking tickets. Tier Talk says, do you do pay training events? I've done, I've helped out with CCW classes before, but I don't do paid police training events. I don't. I do this. This takes up a lot of my time. And then at work, I'm a field training officer, so I get, I train one person at a time. Or I'll do training for the department and they pay me. But there's nowhere, I'm not, I'm not selling classes to anybody right now at least. James Polaski says, does it guarantee a ticket if somebody's ignorant and rude? Well, it won't help your situation any. When you're hoping someone isn't going to write you a ticket, when you're hoping a cop isn't going to write you a ticket, being ignorant and rude to them is not really helpful. It's making it pretty easy for them to make a decision about whether they should write you the ticket or not if they already don't like you. And what you're talking about when you're talking about discretion is the cop is deciding whether writing you the ticket is the right thing to do if that might change your behavior. And if just talking to you about it isn't changing your behavior, if your behavior has actually gotten worse, then I would say there's a good argument that maybe we'll try to see if the ticket will change your behavior. So I don't, I don't suggest being ignorant and rude when somebody's talking to you about writing you a parking ticket. And if they're writing you a parking ticket already and you come out screaming and cursing at them, it's a good chance they might find something else. If I write somebody a handicapped parking ticket and they start throwing a little hissy fit and I notice they don't have a city sticker and the car comes back to town, guess who might get a city sticker ticket too because they made me think about it. Probably just want to take it and walk away. It's always easier to call the adjudication officer later. You can take pictures or video of where your car was parked to prove, hey, there was no sign or the sign was all worn and I didn't see it or there was snow on the ground it was blocking the markings or whatever your excuse is. You got a much better chance with that than if the adjudication officer sees you got three tickets and now you're spinning a tail. Especially if one of them is something that, you know, expired registration or no city sticker or something like that, where they're going to know you were guilty on that at least. It doesn't look good for you. If you get one ticket and it's for some offense, you parked in a handicap, and you could send them pictures. Hey, listen, there's snow all over the ground or the, you know, the sign was knocked down or it's all worn. Oftentimes, the adjudication officers, they'll, they'll take pity on you if you've got a good excuse. But your chances are out the window if they get three or four tickets for stuff that there is no excuse for. What kind of... E, e. Hellbrand says, what kind of dog do you have? She has a Beagle Rot mix. Where's she at? I don't want to call her over here because she'll knock everything over. She's a Beagle Rot mix with one eye. And she's a delight. <laughs> Natchit Graf says, parking tickets for educational purchase purposes. Yep. It works. If it works, it works. If it solves a problem, then that tool is being used properly. Because that's what laws are for. Laws aren't made just, we're going to arbitrarily enforce this stuff. We have laws and they're tools to solve problems. We have tow sheets and they're tools to solve problems. And tow trucks, they're tools to solve problems. We have parking ticket books and moving violation books. Those are tools to solve problems. And we have arrest and that's a tool to solve a problem. Scout 3058 says, Daniel Berkowitz, son of Sam, 44 caliber killer, was caught due to a parking ticket. So as annoying as they are, parking tickets have their place. I know plenty of burglars that have been caught on traffic. Green Rover 10 says, how are you doing with the Thorfire S70S giveaway? Oh, I, I cut them all up and I put them in a little jar and I think I put them in my car. I'll tell you what, when I'm done with this live stream, I will start another one and we'll do the Thorfire S70S giveaway. Because I know I have that little jar. It's somewhere in the house, and I meant to do it with this, but I didn't write it down on my 
I didn't write down on my little notes. I'm driving Mike from uh, Two Guys Talking Podcast Crazy moving the paper, which he distinctly told me to stop playing with. What are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to do that immediately after. Thorfire S70S giveaway coming up right now. Twisted Mickey, are you a cop? That was the general idea I was trying to convey. A couple people have found me. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm a cop. That's Go back and look through the channel. If you're new here, go look through the channel. There's the top uploaded videos. The ones that have gotten the most watches are right at the top of the YouTube channel right now. I changed that a little while ago. It seems to have really helped. We're getting a lot more subscribers. People don't have to dig through to find stuff that's cool. They can be like, hey, here's all the cool stuff right at the top. Hope that helps everybody out. But if you're new to the channel, go in there, check it out. There's a lot of new cool stuff in there. Ellie N... And Opolsky has a very good question. He says, talk about how tickets target the lower middle class and the poor. What's $50 to $350 to a rich guy? Exactly, that's my point. That is actually a very, very good point. We have to be careful that when we're writing parking tickets, the problem or the behavior that we're trying to dissuade people from isn't being poor. And that's where discretion really comes in. If I see a junker car like complete plowed out junker car and the registration's expired by three days. Is it really reasonable to write that person a ticket? Like, am I going to feel good when I look myself in the mirror the next day that I wrote this person a ticket because the registration was expired for three days? I don't know many cops that think that's a really good idea. And so I try to avoid it. If there's an obvious reason that something is the way it is and it's because somebody just doesn't have money, being poor isn't a crime. There really isn't a whole lot that we can do about people that are really rich just getting away with stuff because they've got a lot of money to pay fines. If it's any consolation, at a certain point, some states will actually suspend licenses. Like I said, in Michigan, Michigan has a scheme where your license gets suspended and their car, their nice car that they bought, gets taken away eventually. But that's by, on a state-by-state -state basis. And unfortunately, I'm Tommy, the cop and, and police trainer. I'm not Tommy the king. So I don't make all the rules... What I try to do is do the best that I can and the best that I can to teach people how to apply those rules in a method that is constitutional, reasonable, and legal so that we're not hemming people up for no reason. Thank you very much. I don't know if that was supposed to be a troll comment or not, but it is a very, very good point. Bill Rudisky says, what's your opinion of automatically generated traffic camera tickets? Example, red light camera tickets. I don't think it's a good idea to take the human aspect out of law enforcement. I think that because discretion is there for a reason. At some point, there should be a discretion call. And states that are allowing municipalities to have a red light camera and then issuing moving violations that count as points against your license on a red light camera, I don't think that's a very smart move. Because I've pulled over lots of people for speeding or blowing red lights, things like that, and they had a really good excuse for why they were blowing that red light. You know, there wasn't a lot of cross traffic, and the guy in the back seat's bleeding, and you would never know that unless you pulled him over and asked, or followed him to the hospital. And when they got out of the car, the guy bleeding in the backseat would be like, oh, I guess you don't need a ticket. There's a reason there's a human element to law enforcement. And I think that's the best, most appropriate way to go about it. I will give you one thing, though. I have found out in the last few years that the automatic red light enforcement cameras that were supposed to generate all sorts of money for cities, if they're put in properly, they don't generate money at all because they can't possibly generate enough tickets. Uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation sets down rules on how roads have to be set up in order for their enforcement to be legal. And if cities don't pay those, you get big class action lawsuits. There's a town in the South Suburbs, you can Google it up, you'll find it, uh, that's getting sued for millions of dollars on a class action lawsuit because they created a separate lane of traffic and there wasn't proper signage for the right-hand turn and they were writing people red light tickets for turning right on red when there really was, there was no reason for those tickets to be issued in the first place. At least that was the opinion of the uh, U.S. Department of Transportation. So when they're used properly, they actually lose money because those things break on a pretty regular basis. They cost a lot of money to maintain those systems and they don't generate a lot of revenue, at least here with the structure that we have going on here. That's why you don't see more of them. If they made money, they would be 
everywhere. Every red light going every direction would have them. And what you find is a lot of towns that have red light enforcement cameras, they'll put them on one side of an intersection, and they end up starting to lose money on it, and they don't buy more of them. Green Rover says, everyone has a little bit of a caffeine problem. Not as much as I do. Blue Jay Loyal says, here in Northwest Indiana, they are not big on writing parking tickets for blocking fire hydrants, etc. That depends on the locality. Uh, we're not big on writing for blocking parking tickets. Well, bleh. We're not really big where I'm at on writing tickets for blocking fire hydrants. It's funny, when a firefighter breaks both your windows and puts the hose through it, most people learn. And it makes for really good social media posts. So there's something to be said for that. We probably should write them more. Craig Parker asks, can a meter maid write you a ticket for an equipment violation or can only a police officer? Depends on the state. Here where I'm at, meter maids strictly do the meters. Some towns have pushed that further and they have sworn their people, like the, the private company meter maids only write for the meters. Some towns have meter maids, or they'll call them community service officers, who are sworn in enough. They're not sworn police officers, but they're like sworn clerks, and they can write for minor equipment violations. They can't pull you over for minor equipment violations, at least nowhere I've seen. But if your car's parked somewhere and the registration's expired, they can write for the registration being expired. Anonymous says, <laughs> Anonymous, great name. Anonymous says, have you ever just towed a car immediately? If so, why? Yeah, uh, normally for motor vehicle collisions, we'll just tow the car immediately. I show up, the front end of the car is missing, it's clearly not moving anywhere, and I'll call for a hook, which is what we call a tow truck. I'll call for a hook immediately. And as soon as it gets there, that car's getting picked up and moved because we've got to clear that road out. If we don't clear that road out, you can cause more accidents. The more time we spend in the middle of the street with those red and blue lights on, remember, I've said that before, when you turn those red and blue lights on, people's, people lose their mind. They just lose their minds. And you need to get those cars off the road, the red and blue lights shut off, and all of it into a parking lot as fast as you can. So there's lots of circumstances where I just pull up and, and call for a tow truck immediately. Or if there's a car broken down and it's in the lane of traffic, where people are driving into oncoming traffic to get around it, pull that puppy right now. Get it out as fast as possible before we have a collision, have somebody get hurt. Again, it's to stop dangerous behavior. It's to solve a problem. Aaron Hudson says, I thought cops were used as meter maids like in the movie Zootopia. Not anywhere I've seen. Maybe there's somewhere that just assigns new people to be meter maid, but that's, that's not a thing anywhere I've seen in the U.S., Comment in there if you have seen that. Green Rover says, do you watch the show Southland? I have seen all of Southland, yes. Rob Stevens says, my Coleman looks just as worn as yours. Definitely a coffee problem. And I have the same pillows on my couch. How's that for not relevant? <laughs> I love this thermos coffee cup. There's going to be a little link somewhere near wherever this is posted, whether it's a podcast or on Instagram or on YouTube. There's probably going to be a link somewhere for this coffee cup. This is the best coffee cup I've ever found for police work. It fits in all cup holders and it keeps your coffee warm. They make one now that's just stainless steel, but I kind of like the rugged look of the black one, how it gets all worn. But yeah, this is how you can tell a true coffee lover is that they've got their messed up thermos coffee cup. And uh, the pillows were given to me. I have no idea where we got them from. They were, I think it was a wedding gift. They're really old. Jace M says, my city has a cop as a meter maid, and this person's armed with a measuring stick to measure how far you park to the curb, and they also check the meters. The parking distance to the curb, for me, is, I normally look at that as a matter of how ridiculous is your park job. I think the law here, the ordinance here, is 18 inches. You're parked more than 18 inches from the curb. If I don't think it's a solid two feet or more, I'm not writing that. And it's normally because someone will call and be like, we can't get through the street. And so I go out there and I'm like, yeah, that car's parked, parked all cockeyed three feet from the curb. We'll write it a ticket. Or if it's really bad and it's in the lane of traffic, we'll tow it out. I'm not out there measuring with a, a tape measure. That's ridiculous. JT Coops says, you the man in the process for two different departments. Thanks for all you post. Hey, I'm glad you like them, man. You got any ideas? Put them in the comments down below of the video so that way I can remember 
to uh, use up your ideas. I always need new ideas for podcasts, live streams, videos, all of that. Joseph Engelhart says, talking about 401, you ever have any interest in moving to CID or detective work? They've offered me to go to, to TAC, which is like our narcotics and gangs division, and in the detectives at, at certain points in my career. And it just doesn't interest me. You know, there's something to be said for finding the thing that you're good at, that you're passionate for, and staying there and not messing with it. And I've tried other specialized stuff before that didn't last really long. So why jump from thing to thing to thing if I like what I'm doing, especially now that I have this going on? Harry Rodriguez says, what's your Instagram? My Instagram is Tommy, T-O-M-M-Y, underscore, free field training. But if you go on Instagram, if you go on Instagram and just type in free field training, I pop right up. Same logo and everything. Green Rover 10 says, is an officer required to tell you their badge number if asked? Some place, every place has different rules. So I can't tell you everywhere, but I'll tell you something. My name is written in half inch tall letters on my shirt. If you're asking for my badge number, you're just goofing. Because my name's on my shirt. It's on my vest cover. It's clearly visible. And we're having a face-to-face conversation. What's your badge number? Yeah keep playing that's i'm really really intimidated because when people say that when these what's your badge number and you've got your especially with the modern shirts that have the name it's written at least a half an inch tall across your shirt what's your badge number They're just trying to intimidate you just don't pay attention if the department policy says you got to tell them your badge number you tell them your badge number so what they already know your name you're on the call the electronic dispatch call you're on it anybody can look up that you were the one that's there they've got your name what is the number going to help? That's silliness. That's, that's just people goofing. That's people trying to intimidate you. It, it has no effect on me. <laughs> it actually makes it a lot easier for me to figure out who this is the raving lunatic on a call. If, if I say something, what's your badge number? I'm like, well, clearly you're the one that doesn't know what's going on. Jacob H. says, my department, very large, rarely issues them just due to manpower. I understand completely. There's lots of times that we just don't have the manpower to be issuing tickets at all. We're on afternoons. We could be rocking. Everybody goes to 30, 40 calls in a day, and we don't have time to be going out and doing self-initiated ticket writing at all, let alone going and finding parking tickets to do. At 3 o'clock in the morning, or if you got time to do it, you're going to write a handicapped parker or something, that's great. Like I said, of all people, I am not a big ticket writer. Kevin Tomes says, I received a parking ticket when I was parked during free parking hours and asked a patrolling cop if I was good, and he said yes. Also, I even paid the meter. Return return to a ticket. Return to a ticket. Should I... There. Return to a ticket. Should have fought it? Question mark? I don't know. Do you have a way in which to fight it is the question. Because most parking tickets are going to be based upon a preponderance of the evidence, which means what you basically have to do is prove that your car wasn't parked somewhere illegally or that the car wasn't registered to you at the time or the ticket wasn't issued to your car. Like in my case, when I said I got a ticket and they could tell him, hey, listen, this isn't a black two-door Acura. It's not a black two-door Acura. It clearly wasn't me. So they quashed it. Jessica Wilkinson says, if I could end up writing 200 a day for handicapped parking, but you also have to watch out because people use others to park there. Some people will use the handicap placard of another person to park in the handicap spot. And those are my favorite people because that's arrestable in Illinois. Using the handicap placard of another person is arrestable. James Pulaski says, do you like the 2017 Explorers? Yeah, they're a great direct replacement for the Ford Crown Victoria. 
That so far has been, the 2017 Explorer has been my favorite squad car yet. So that's saying something. I've been in quite a few. That's my favorite one. For the size of them and the safety ratings on them, and especially since they're all all-wheel drive, that's the new thing with Ford is their squad cars, if you want to have it as a police car, you want to buy the police package, it's all-wheel drive, which is fantastic. They handle really well. They hug the road, and they're quick enough to get the job done, especially around town. For a city police department, Ford Explorers are almost ideal. I mean, I would take an Echo Boost if you offered it to me. I mean, gladly. But even the, nat- the naturally aspirated, that 3.5 liter 6 or 3.6 liter 6, I forget which one they're on to now, is a great engine, puts out plenty of power through the all-wheel drive system. It's a front-wheel bias, so it's real easy to teach the new people. They're good cars. Connor Coleman says, is a taser a compliance tool or part of the use of force continuum? Well, a taser is a use of force. Everything's a use of force. Officer presence is a use of force. So if I'm an officer in uniform, i that's a level of force. Officer presence is a level of force. If there's a bunch of people screaming and fighting and punching each other, and I don't have enough manpower to take care of all of them, and I take the cartridge off the taser, hold it over my head, pull the trigger, and go, eh, stop it now! Who wants to get tased? That's also a use of force, isn't it? Is it a direct use of force against a person? No. But is it a level of force? Yes. It's a high officer presence level. And then if you then drive stun someone with it, it can be a pain compliance tool. Tasers, when they don't have a cartridge on them, when you just hit them on somebody without the cartridge on, so no little probe shootout, those are pain compliance tool that you can use to get one person off of another person, get somebody's hands behind their back, get them out of the ground, put it into the small of their back, they won't pull their hands off from under them, Give them a three-second shock, get their hands out from behind their back. It's a significant use of force. Very close to the same level as hitting someone with a baton, but it's a compliance tool. And then the taser, when you shoot with the prongs, is a very high level of less lethal force. It's, it's all on the force continuum. From the very bottom, officer presence, right up to, you know, directly below lethal force. Depending on how you use it. Which... Always must be reasonable. That's the important thing for us to remember. Brent Rockwood asks, I've been meaning to suggest a topic for a video. What is the deal with issue gear versus what you pay for out of your own money? Do some agencies give you allowance for gear every year or something? Here's the deal with that. Some agencies issue everything. Some agencies issue nothing. Some agencies give you an allowance that doesn't cover everything. Some agencies give you an allowance that covers everything. Some agencies buy just certain things. Like where I'm at, they issue me a vest. I'm required to use their vest. They issue me a taser. I'm required to use their taser. They issue me a badge, and they issue me my ammunition. And an ID card, and a helmet, and a baton. And a gas mask. I also have a gas mask. And that's about it. And everything else is on my dime. So there's broad spectrum. Chicago PD, they get a small stipend for uniforms, relatively small, with the cost of living in Chicago and what the gear costs. And then they have to buy everything from their small stipend. Other towns issue everything. And when something wears out, you bring it in, they give you a voucher, you go to the uniform supply house, and you get another one brand new for free. It gets paid by the city. It's everything in between. So you get those two extremes and everything in between. EDM Zero says, what's a Thorfire S70S? Sounds like a flashlight. Is that what it is? I did a flashlight video probably nine months ago now and I said I was going to do the drawing for a giveaway on it. And I still haven't done it. But I'm going to do it right after this video. Keep reminding me and I'll do it right after this video. We'll do another live stream almost immediately. Blue Jay Loyal says, how do you feel about ID refusal? ID refusal? So what, you don't give me your ID? That's great. So we just move on to the next level. Doesn't matter to me. 
So I pull you over in your car. I'm not going to provide you ID. Okay. Now you're going to jail. So I pulled you over for an offense. And a ticket is a summons to court. It is an alternative to arresting people. It is a convenience measure for the driver. If you want to not give me your ID, okay. We're going to pull you out of the car. You're going to go to jail. Your car's going to get towed probably. And uh, you talk to the judge about it. We'll find out who you are. We'll fingerprint you. Find out who you are. And if we can't find out who you are, we'll sign a name to those fingerprints. And the next time you get locked up, you get picked up on that warrant. I mean, like, there is no workaround on this. If you think you came up with something new, you got another thing coming. There, there's, there's very little new under the sun. All that is old is new again. And with the technology today, ID refusal isn't a big thing. Now, if you get stopped and it's for no reason and you decide not to give me your ID, whatever. But it's not going to be for no reason. I've never stopped someone for no reason. I've always had reason enough to require them to give me ID. And if they don't, they're going to end up going to jail. It's just that simple. Andy Torrey says, I feel that once an officer has activated his camera, there is no longer discretion. What's your thoughts on this subject? You know, people said the same thing about dashboard cameras. When I started, we didn't have dashboard cameras. We got dashboard cameras and they said, there's not going to be any more officer discretion because we got these dashboard cameras. And they're recording everything that we do. And has it changed really? No. It hasn't changed a thing. The fact that it's recorded doesn't change whether something's reasonable or not. And discretion is about making the proper decision given the reasonableness in the situation. Wrestling Soup says, Much love, Sarge. I'm not the Sarge. <laughs> Uh, happy to continue supporting your vids on Patreon. Thank you for educating and informing. Up on Patreon right now, we've got a video on searching houses, and we've got a video on a flashlight. I forget which one it is, to be honest with you. We've got a flashlight video up there, too. Uh, go follow me on Patreon, a dollar a month, and you get advanced screenings of the videos. We've got a couple videos that are up there right now that haven't been released yet. I am not as far ahead as I normally am. Normally on Patreon, I try to stay two or three weeks ahead. I'm not because my desktop computer that I edit videos on crashed on me last week and I'm working on a replacement and so for right now I'm doing everything on this laptop that we're recording for the podcast with so that's all I have to edit with so it's severely limited my editing that I've been doing right now however I've got several videos that are in the can right now that are on the computer I have to wait until I get a computer that will have the processing power in order to edit it properly. And then I'm going to have a whole bunch of stuff coming out. i got my duty bag video, stuff on Riot Gear. I've got uh, taser videos that are coming out. It's it's What's holding me back right now is editing, but there's a lot of stuff coming out. And that's why we're doing a good live stream this week that I figured everybody would like. Jack268-0313 says, Have you ever dealt with sovereign systems before? If so, how did the encounter turn out? Thanks. I've dealt with sovereign citizens before. Here we have a big community of Moorish. Call themselves Moorish. And uh, they are really awesome with shenanigans. They come up with new shenanigans every time. And every time it ends up with them going to jail and their car getting towed. Occasionally we'll get someone who's Moorish, which is a type of sovereign citizen, on a domestic. And it just ends up being like a normal domestic. We tell them, listen, you're going to end up going to jail. It's, well, I don't, I don't subscribe to your laws. I'm like, guess what? There is no separate sovereign citizen jail. You go to jail, you're going to jail, and you're not going to have a choice in the matter. So we better start getting with the program. It doesn't matter whether you believe in the laws or not. They exist. The police are here. The people who fight you and take you to jail are here. It's time to start wising up to the fact that the program is actually happening. Not cop lock. <laughs> says, I know someone that uses her mom's handicap placard while using her mom's car. She recently had surgery on both knees and her shoulder, and her shoulder, but the placard is not in her name. Would you cite her? Well, first I'd have to know, and then I'd have to care, and then I'd have to think that that's reasonable. And if those are the only circumstances in front of me, what you've told me and what I'm saying, then I would have to say probably not. Because that doesn't sound really reasonable, does it? What we do has to be legal and it has to be reasonable. Because if it's not legal and reasonable, we're just spinning our wheels. 
We're not getting anywhere. Samuel Iridia says, if an officer collided with another vehicle while on duty, who pays the damage? The insurance companies, just like every other motor vehicle collision. That's why everyone has insurance. No one crash, unless someone crashes into somebody else on purpose, then it's different. Most insurance companies won't pay that. At least not if they're smart. But if it's an accident, or there's no evidence that it was done on purpose, then it's the insurance companies pay it. Just like if you hit any other car. Matt Nichols says, I'm a firefighter in Pennsylvania in charge of training new probies. Curious how you help new guys through their first traumatic scene. I really don't have any advice on you on that for you. I mean, we normally talk about it in advance. I'll tell people the story that I had before. There's a YouTube video and a podcast. I go back and forth with the name. Uh, one is uh, Sadie on 126, and the other one, I forget what I named it. I'll put a link down in the description for you. Uh, a cops, I think I called it a cop's first time. That's what it was. One of them, it's it's on the pod. The normally I share with them the story of Sadie on 126. I've got a YouTube video on it called "A Cop's First Time," and it's the story of the first time that I dealt with a traumatic accident. I watched a little girl die, and. It's also eventually going to be up on the podcast, freefieldtrainingpodcast.com. It'll probably be a lot better edited and sound better on that. Uh, the original video is two hours long, so it should make a good, hearty podcast for a midnight shift if you guys want to go check that out. But I'll normally share with them that story, and I'll have them look up reports from prior incidents that I have been in and have them read them so that way they get an idea for what's ahead of them. But I don't think anything really prepares people for the limits of the depravity you run into in the public safety industry and how terrible it is on your psyche. Mr. Lance931 says, book every police officer should read, Terror at Beslan. Terror at Beslan. Read it. Timothy Cortamanchi says, I know it's 18 inches in a lot of states. Here in New Hampshire, it's 12 inches. The, the rules change in every municipality here in Illinois. It might be 12 inches here, and I wouldn't know. But I know if it doesn't look funny, I don't normally write it. So I'm not out there with a tape measure seeing how far you are away from the curb. If you look ridiculously far away from the curb, I write a ticket. If it's bothering someone. Black Dolphin 90 says, what do you think about people who camp on private property? Here we just write them a ticket and tell them they got to go home. Oh, on private property? Why do I care? If it's their property or the landowner says they can camp there, I don't care. I thought you were talking about in parks. Yeah, if it's on private property, I don't really care. I don't think there's any rules against that. You can pitch a tent in your own backyard or someone else's backyard if they say you can. Savage Bro 34 says, Hey, this is Tank Lorira from Instagram. You said you will give me a shout out on my channel if I catch the live stream. Savage Bro 34. I don't know what Savage Bro 34 does. I haven't seen his videos. At least I don't think I have. I subscribed to over 200 channels, so I could never know. But there's his shout out Savage Bro 34. There you go. I hope that helps you. <laughs> Timothy Kamarnshi says, there is a video, I hope you're, I'm saying your name right, Timothy Kortmanshi says, there's a video where a sovereign citizen loses his mind because the department does not have badge numbers. <laughs> That's awesome. AJ Power says, what are the normal calls you respond to every day? Do lots of domestics, uh, burglar alarms, hold up alarms at the banks, retail thefts, uh, armed robberies, a little more than I wish I would, and then you know, throw in some, some serious violent crime a couple times a week. It's good times. A 
Annoy the Donkey says, how are officers trained to know between someone who is, has a handicap and someone who may be intoxicated when doing a field sobriety test? Many health issues can cause poor balance and nystag nystagness. Well, it's never just one thing that determines whether somebody's intoxicated. It's never just nystagmus. It's never just poor balance. It's someone with bloodshot, glossy eyes that smells of an alcoholic beverage that you can name, that can't stand up, that has nystagmus. It's all of those things. It's crashing into the pole. It's running into curbs. It's weaving in and out two lanes of traffic. It's all that stuff together. People, people latch onto one thing and think that like that's the be-all, end-all of how we're going to make a decision. It's just not. Now, are there hacks out there that would do that? Yeah. There's hacks in every profession. I was a truck driver before. There were truck drivers that would drive 14 hours straight through. They didn't care. They didn't care. They didn't care if they hurt somebody. They didn't care if they did drugs. They didn't care if they drank while they were driving the truck. <coughs> that doesn't make it right. That doesn't make that the right thing to do. It doesn't mean that that's what most truck drivers do. So are there cops out there who might lock somebody up just because they have poor balance, thinking that they're drunk? Yeah, sure. I'm sure somewhere there is. Is that the majority of them? No. Is that the right thing to do? No. There's hacks in every profession. But when we look at whether someone's intoxicated or not, especially when they're driving, we're looking at the totality of what we're seeing. It's never just, hey, he smells like booze, we're going to lock him up for drunk driving. That's not how it works. And if there's any doubt at all, call an ambulance. The paramedics get there and be like, no, 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 dude. Yeah, he may have drank a little bit, but his sugar's 12? That's different. Timothy says, have you actually arrested someone for using someone else's handicap placard? If so, high five to you. High five. <laughs> oh, it's, there's no excuse. I, like, I'm all right giving someone a pass on something that's, it's a, a mistake of the, of the mind, right? I didn't know. I wasn't paying attention. I give people a pass on that. You know, I parked up on the curb, this is a new car, I don't normally drive this car, this is my grandma's car, all of that. You put the handicap placard up there and park in the handicap spot, knowing it wasn't yours, I don't feel sorry for you. Black Dolphin 90 says, do you think that people should still use locks in their cars like steering wheel locks, or are they obsolete? The, the club? The club don't work for nothing. You got a professional car thief. Here's the thing is that most cars now, they're all chipped keys. There's very few cars that don't have chipped keys. If you have a chipped key car, that's way harder to deal with than the club. Anybody that's a car thief is going to be able to get the club off. All that takes is a pair of bolt cutters to the steering wheel to take the club right off of it. It's the chipped key that gets it. Now, most cars that are stolen now are carjacked or they're stolen while someone is warming the car up or they're taken with a tow truck. It's very hard to hotwire a car anymore. Green Rover says, do you think that people who park in handicapped spots without a disability are jerks? That was the general idea that I was trying to convey. Yes, I think they're jerks. Jose says, Chicago police exam, May 5th, 2018. Good luck. Martin Jarquin says, off topic, have you heard of anyone using the dragon skin duty belt? I can't find much on it besides that they claim on their website it's the most ergonomic duty belt. I actually played with the dragon skin duty belt at the World EMS Expo in Las Vegas, and I was playing with it, and it's, it's stretchy. So you put the duty belt on, and they had one set up. They found my size, and they put it on me, and they put weights on it, and they're like, listen, it, it stretches with you. 
Now, like anything that's stretchy, it makes me wonder how long it's going to work stretchy like that, and I haven't used it long enough to know, but at the time, it was really comfortable. <laughs> it was a really comfortable duty belt. Blue Jay Loyal says, I just paid $950 for a level two vest. Is that too much? It's not too much. There's a few things in life you shouldn't skimp out on when you're paying for. Body armor, guns, bullets, condoms. Probably want to buy the best of those that you can afford. And if that $950 vest is the best vest for you, then that's a good investment. Johnny Reb says, not to go off topic, but does your department provide you with Narcan? Mine does since I'm on the drug squad. We don't have Narcan yet. And we should. I think it's actually state law we're supposed to, but we don't have it. They decide, yeah, you have to have Narcan, but there's no administrative way to get it and to teach us how to administer it. Like none of that stuff's been done yet. And so we don't have it. I kind of wish I did. We've pumped a few people back to life who overdosed on heroin. Narcan would have made it significantly easier. Uh, Jack2680313 says, I noticed in another video you carry the 40 caliber Glock, but with an even longer barrel than standard full size. Does your department let you carry any kind of 40 caliber handgun? We've got specific requirements that we have to meet with handguns. We have specific requirements we have to meet with handguns, and it has to be 940 or 45. The barrel has to be longer than three inches. It has to be from certain manufacturers. I think there's it's Glock, Springfield Armory, HK... SIG, a couple others, but mine is well within those specifications. In fact, it exceeds all the specifications that are set forth. So they're more than happy with me carrying that. Green Rover 10 says, do you think EMTs need vests? I do think EMTs need vests. I think EMTs, I think people working in ambulance should be wearing body armor, or at the very least, it should be made available to them. Paramedics where I'm at have this tendency of running into warm zones. And by warm zone, I mean there's been a violent crime, somebody's been shot, and we can't declare the scene secure, but there is no immediate exigent threat. And I think in those cases, it makes a lot of sense to allow EMTs to have vests. Because the EMTs, the paramedics that I know, are going into those zones anyway. Even if you make a policy against it, they're going in. That's the type of people that they are. And I think instead of I think for pol I think instead of administrators trying to make rules and punish people who go into warm zones, they should be supporting their people who are that enthused, who are that serious about their job, who are that serious about helping the public, that they're willing to go into a warm zone even though they're unarmed without a vest. Put a vest on them. They're cheap insurance. And you put a vest on them, and even one person saves getting a bullet. It's going to save all that money that you would have spent on an emergency room visit buying all of the vests. Economically, it makes sense. Strategically, it makes sense. And it's the right thing to do. I think they should be an option. They should be available for paramedics and EMTs that are working. And I think that's going to be it. We've got a lot of comments on here, but I am getting way over time on this live stream. I wish I could do all of them, and I still have to do... My dog is scratching herself, driving me crazy. I wish I could do everybody's comments. I can see that there's still boatloads and boatloads more. I wish I could get to all of them, but I just can't. We're right at an hour now, so I'm going to cut it off. Uh, we're going to do the Thorfire S70S giveaway right now. As soon as I'm done with this and it processes, I'm going to start up another live stream and we're going to do that giveaway. So stick around for that. And until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other.